do you and you solo handle disrespect from your kids toward you or their siblings? What home or land buying advice would you give to young people? Hey Sarah, what do you do for your personal Bible study? How do I get my boys into reading? What other YouTube tech items do you love? What are your favorite go-tos that help you make the best videos? Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I am filming an Ask Sarah and Susan video because my mom's in town and I thought I'd save some of these questions that you guys sent in to ask her. And because, Papa's not here. Yeah, Papa's not here. She yeah. waits till he leaves town and then says, would you do this video with me? <laughs> We're filming in my Aunt Sharon's kitchen because it's quiet here and quiet here. <laughs> That's why. Uh, my mom's been in town for a couple weeks just to help my grandma out. She is, mm -hmm. she's fine, but she, she's 96, almost 97. And she needs more help. She's transitioning to a different phase. Different phase. Yeah. So I'm so thankful she's here. And I want to tell you, transition's hard no matter what age you are. Man, it is just not hard. encouraging at all. No, you, <laughs> you have to be flexible. Uh huh. Life goals. Yeah. Flexible. Flexible. She's doing good being flexible, but it's it's challenging sometimes. Yeah. She just needs a little more help, which she's doing very good on her own. Which is hard to admit. Yeah. When you need help. She lives yeah. independently and almost 97, so. Yeah, so we wanna keep her independent. Yeah, that's as the long thing. As and that's what we're stressing. Yes. We want you to stay independent as long as possible. Because she wants to stay independent. Yes. Yes, yes. yes. so lots of, yep. lots of things to navigate. Yeah. I'm thankful you're up here to navigate them. Yep, we're in, I'm the sandwich generation. Yeah, right. I have to take care of Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> And Luke, and then I have to take care of my mom. I'm already like booking her for September. Do you think you could be around to help me out? September. Some things or just like different dates, oh, like randomly. Yeah. Okay, do you think you might be able to, can you come help me plant flowers in May? While I'm still independent, <laughs> you better get me. <laughs> right. Uh, okay, so we're answering some questions you sent in by email, and I'm still answering questions from June, so this is a little far back. <laughs> So hopefully they're yeah. still relevant, but they will be. And my mom raised two children successfully. I don't know what successfully means, but they're, we're still, you know, we're still talking to you. That's successful. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. You say what's successful. To yes. me, it's successful. Yes. Yes. I think it's successful. So, okay. Leah, maybe Leah, Leah wrote in and said, um, hi Sarah, I love your tribe. I'm a 70 year old mom and grandma of six adults with nine grandchildren so far. We live and minister in Israel. I'm a Jewish believer, wow. pastor's wife. We've had a very hard time raising our kids here, but that's a long story not for this email. I resonate with what you say about commercials. We've always changed the channel when edifying things came on, unedifying things. My kids resented it and their friends thought we were weird and insane, but now most don't even have TVs and monitor what their kids watch even more than we did. So praise the Lord, the battles are worth it. Our all time favorite book for teens and up is A Walk Across America by Peter Jenkins. Have you heard of that? Yeah, I have not. 25 year old book, but timeless. If you haven't read it together, Really recommend it. You will laugh and cry together. And in the end, he comes to faith. It's a true story. So, oh, that's cool. It so is. she just sent me that recommendation. I love that. And she wrote, all your children will be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of your children, which is Isaiah 54, 13. I love that. I think I will share a favorite book. One we read with our teens for the mature audience because it is graphic, but it really left a mark on our kids. Solo mm -hmm. and I read it to the, the older ones together, just like the oldest three, I think at the time, several years mm -hmm. ago. Uh, was Immaculate Libagiza's book. I think that's how you say her name. It's called uh -huh. Left to Tell, and yeah, it was about know. her survival in that. <coughs> I never read that. Rwandan genocide. You wow. should. It is so good. It's is just it really... on your Audible? No. Is it on your... She might have my Audible. Is it on, your... <laughs> is it on your Kindle? Uh, n No. Oh, shoot. <laughs> I, I just ordered another copy because Solo gave one away. That's how much we like the book. Oh, when we give books to. away, it's okay, easier I'll to like it. Then. So, well, but I, you can borrow my copy <laughs> mm. <laughs> next time you're up here. Do you have a book you would recommend? Oh, I'm reading Winds, Winds of War right now. And that book's that thick. Mm. <laughs> it is. It's huge. And I've never read it. It is great. I, I haven't even heard about it. Oh, it, they made a movie out oh. of it and the, um something to remember um is a sequel mm. and it's about the beginning of world war ii but mm. it is 
great. So if you never it when you're done, it's on my Kindle. I'll oh, give okay. you my sign in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I actually do have the book, oh. Winds of War, I, too, okay. because I had the other one, so I ordered that one so I'd have the set. That's how good it is. Oh, nice. It's just a really good book. Oh. It's just too big to take on the airplane, so oh. I did it on a Kindle. I'll have to borrow it when I'm there. But, yeah, I'm shocked. I thought it would be boring because it looks so big, so yeah. it's taking me forever to read it. <laughs> but no, I'm getting through it. I'm a quarter of the way through. Wow. <laughs> All right. Okay, Lorna said, hi there. How do you and you solo handle disrespect from your kids toward you or their siblings or if that just simply doesn't happen how would you handle it when i say disrespectful i mean something really horrible like shut up mom or i hate you or get the camera out of my face how would you handle it if one of your children lied to you or stole something i can't imagine any of that happening but if it would how would you handle it it can happen yes it In can the best of families yes it can i wouldn't say we haven't had like um, kids say something like that, but we have had one child that tends to, um, in his, in his anger, maybe just be a little more on the disrespectful side. Maybe not saying quite harsh those words, but you can tell it's definitely disrespect. And we shut it down right away. You may not talk like that in this house ever. I think because I focus a lot and solo on their attitude when they're young. Mm -hmm. Like if they're not wanting to do something, what is the attitude? Like they're tired or is it really a bad attitude about it like what's the motive behind if it was just kind of their testing waters or whatever or they are truly you know when they're young that they're being disrespectful we try to shut that down very young and I think that helps um, by the time they get to teenagers they know like this is just not happening in this house although we have obviously had kids test it a little here and there when when their hormones are raging actually more than just the one we've had them say disrespectful comments back like when you're asking them to do something but we just really like shut that down right away to me that is the biggest thing like if they continue to be disrespectful that's like when keys come back phone comes back mm -hmm. whatever leverage you have like you, you will not be like that in this house and mm -hmm. you need to change what do you think um well i think uh kids every kid tests Testy. Mm -hmm. I mean, they they do it at different levels, but yeah. they do different test ages you. Mm -hmm. and different ages, but also different levels of testing. Like some will learn really, really quick. No, mm -hmm. I'm not testing them anymore. I don't like that response. But mm -hmm. the key is the response and the consistency of the response. Oh yes. I remember as a child. I mean, I was a real mouthy kid mm -hmm. and sassy, and I got away with a lot of sassing until one time. I didn't, mm -hmm. and my mom, I pushed too many buttons with my mom, and my my parents were wonderful parents, never, no abuse ever, but she slapped me when I did it. Oh. She just, and I was so shocked. Oh my goodness. I never yeah. did it again, <laughs> never. So, uh, that was her way of, that was like, her way, and later, later she came and apologized for mm -hmm. doing that and that she shouldn't have done it that way. But actually, it taught me a huge lesson that that was not to happen ever. Mm -hmm. And I offended her, mm -hmm. you know, the way I did that. Mm -hmm. I think I was about 13 or something. Mm -hmm. And so, then with my own kids, I mean, um, Sarah tested the waters in her own way, she would just be quiet. You could tell she didn't like what we told her to do and was upset, mm -hmm. but it never came out of her mouth that she was upset. It would be more actions, sullen or quiet or, mm -hmm. you know, stay in her room or whatever. With my son, it was the opposite. Mm -hmm. And uh, he would try. And uh, my husband was so strict on this because his parents mm -hmm. had three boys and then a girl. And those boys were taught respect for their mom. Mm -hmm. And they could not mouth off ever. And it was severe. <laughs> severe. <laughs> severe. For every family has their level of severe. But I think the child knows that. Mm -hmm. And that it, their level of severe was theirs. And they knew they cannot do that. That is yeah. disrespectful. You don't disrespect anybody in language and mm -hmm. speech or anything. And so they would just immediately receive that punishment and I think that's a real key yeah to not get ever get away with it I, I would say too I, I remember a few conversations I've had in the last year with kids older kids that um, were 
maybe showing their level of disrespect and I would um, later after that moment because the consequence happens you know whether they get some taken away or mm -hmm. event canceled or whatever but then we or myself and solo have talked to them about hey we want to know your opinions we're interested if there's something that we can do that also helps you be able to process what needs mm -hmm. to happen in this house right. that's fine you can you can talk to us about that anytime we can talk about it right now right. But you don't, di you're not yeah. disrespectful in the way that you, right. you don't talk to us. That way. Yeah, so like I'll t I use Judah, who's already grown and out of the house as an example, but he did not like being asked things when he already had plans and he was out the door and we're like, oh, can you take out that trash? He would do it, but he came to us later and he's like, and this was not disrespectful. He was like, uh, but a few times he had been real frustrated, you know? And I didn't even realize what was happening, but we were asking him things when he was on his way to something. And he's like, I would love to help in any way, but could you let me know ahead of time? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you for telling me. I didn't even realize that we were doing that. Mm -hmm. And I will let you know ahead of time. And thank you so much for being willing to help. That's how we have a respectful conversation. You get what you want. Mm -hmm. I get what I want, so right. to speak. You know, so we're trying to teach our kids that because it will help them so much in their future to be to just have a respectful way of being able to communicate, even in their well, frustration, and right? And also, like the first time, first time they try it, you deal with it a certain way. Yes. Second time, you deal with it more strict mm -hmm. and uh, prepare them for what that will be. Yeah. And especially as they get older, mm -hmm. you tell them, if that ever happens again, this will happen. And then yes. do it. Yes. Don't just say, right. well, then if it happens again, this is going to happen. Yes. And when it happens yeah. over and over, too, I think a lot of times, mm -hmm. uh, teens especially, they don't always have, well, kids in general, they don't have a way of communicating what they're really feeling. So they might be frustrated right. about something completely different. Might be something to... happening at school or something yep. happening um, with their friends. This is most often the case. I think yeah. there's a bigger picture. There's a bigger problem And so we are always looking for what is that problem? We're trying to open up conversation. They don't always want to talk about it But yeah. sometimes eventually you can get there by just creating like uh, I don't like this phrase very much But safe spaces really for them to talk. Yeah Outside of the heated moment because often there there will be something that's bothering them It's right. not just hormones or and whatever. I wish I would have done that more. I think you did do that I remember oh. you doing that see well. so sometimes we're doing better than we think yeah I would well, say that. There's always one of the one of the couple that just reacts and the other cup the other one takes time to find out what the problem is. I think the one to me, the one mm -hmm. in the situation being respected yes. is more likely to react and the yes. one who saw it later is like, Hey, don't listen, there might be something mm -hmm. else yes. going on here. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> so it can be either one. But right. if you're always the one that's getting it, you're, it's easier to be the reactor. Yeah. So it's that's where it's so nice to have two parents that but can help. The question that uh, oh I know your kids would never do that. No. Oh yeah. We are normal people. They're normal. We're normal people. <laughs> Gosh. <laughs> okay, Darius said, first, thanks so much for everything you do do on your channel. I found one of your grocery hauls a few years ago when I was in college having a tough time being away from home and your videos helped me relax and distress. Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. That's cool. Now, living in my own apartment, I love implementing some of the tips and tricks you talk about for meal planning and organization. You have a wonderful family. Thank you. My question is, since you've recently purchased an acreage, and are planning to build, what home or land buying advice would you give to young people? I've always wanted to own my own home and now I'm entering my late 20s and I wanna start actively planning toward that. But all I keep hearing is how impossible it is for young people to get on the property ladder anymore, that everything is way too expensive. I know my first home won't be perfect and I'm hoping to start with a fixer upper, but it's still a daunting task. I'm a teacher living in California, Ugh, yes, but I'm originally from the Midwest and hoping to move closer to home soon both to be near my family and because it's much more affordable to live there. Okay, I think it's smart to think about if you're going to be moving closer to family, that might be a good time to buy because I know you mm -hmm. obviously can get a lot more for your money. But the only reason we've been able to afford what we have is because we started very, very small. Mm -hmm. And then we would sell it in the up market and we'd fix it up as much as we can and we're not even good at that stuff. <laughs> and we'd sell it and then we did the same thing and so we're on like our fourth pro property. If you can do the work or if you can trade for the work from friends or whatever to get something more that yeah. you can fix up and sell, um, you don't have to look for perfection at all. And yeah, land is hard to buy, but I, another thing I would encourage you is if you can't to get some, the if something falls through, you find the perfect thing and it falls through, that there's probably something better out there. Yes. So it's, it's patience. We look for two yeah. years 
before we found right. what we have now and that's a long time and then um, even before we moved in our last house we were looking for an acreage and so that was like seven years before that so right and look and if land's really important then buy the land mm -hmm. and build the home then build the home or whatever yes. or put up a tent or whatever yes, an rv or, or an rv or something but possibly. yeah you have to determine what's important to i agree you. that's what we got to really location is like, location location yes then what you you know then what you want because you can always build or change or make yes. what you want to live in yes but the location and the property you can't mm -hmm. and that's what we got to with our last one is like okay the land is the most important fact yeah. when we sent the property we told our realtor we want to see this today and she's like that house is really tiny yeah. and we just determined okay right. the land was more important right. but we they fit in the it we you didn't. fit in it Somehow, there's no room way. for me but you did fit there's barely I guess I could us. sleep on a couch. They do have two couches. Hey, we've had company in the last couple nights, so it's possible. Where there's it a is. will, there's a way. It is. Okay, Erica sent in a video. Hey, Sarah, what do you do for your personal Bible study? Okay, Erica, I answered this in my last video last week. I love Tara Lee Cobble's Bible Recap, which I always forget the name of. Uh, and I talked a little bit about, more about that. So I thought, I'll ask Mom, what do you do? I'm not a good devotional person. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think... They don't do that much for me, but but what I've done in the last few years is I read through the Bible every year. Oh, well, there you go. And um, you, there are a lot of apps on the Bible mm -hmm. app. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, what is it called? It's the U version. Yeah. And you can go on there and a lot of ways to read through the Bible. There are some with devotions where they do a devotion, then they do some, some Psalms, some Proverbs, or just Psalms and switch between Psalms and Proverbs, and then New Testament and Old Testament. But to me, the first time I ever did that was when you were about uh, five years old. Mm -hmm. I, I was raised in a family, pa pastor's home and everything, missionary home, but I'd never read the Bible from cover to cover. Mm. And I decided to do that that year. It changed the way I saw all of scripture. Mm -hmm. And to me, it was so profound that mm -hmm. I just wanted to do it. Now, I didn't make it, I think that year I made it through the Bible in the year. Since then, I haven't. Mm -hmm. So even now, I'm catching up from yeah, last yeah, yeah. year. That's what but, I told them. Um, I do all that Bible in two years. Yes, basically, basically <laughs> what I do too. But it it is so good, even in the quote unquote boring parts. Mm -hmm. God can speak to you in verses you've read over and over and over mm -hmm. again, and putting it together. That's such a big book and has so many books in the book mm -hmm. that you never read the same thing twice mm -hmm. it's always different and then if you underline mm -hmm. I, one of my um sisters-in-law she reads a bible every year or two and she reads it for yes. one of her grandchildren and she writes their name in it and through the whole year she underlines things just for that grandchild and writes and, notes and, and stuff. writes notes yes. and stuff i think that's such a great it idea is such a great idea i don't know if i could complete it she has it, a lot less grandchildren than you right now but i know but you know it would take well, by maybe the time, she doesn't actually she no, doesn't <laughs> by the no she doesn't by the time pieces yeah you know, i mean I, if Mom, I started, started. now <laughs> uh, anyway i thought that was a really yes good idea. that is i did talk about reading through the Bible last time, but I do want to mention some days I just, I, I don't have time for that, even that amount of scripture that it, ha it, it takes. takes. It takes me on this one that I've been doing in 20 minutes. Yeah. And it's the Nikki Gumbel. Oh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, that one. And he does a devotional too that you listen he to. He does a devotional yeah. first and talks about what you're going to read about and yes. then does it. Yes. So the, anyway, days I just don't have that kind of time. I'll even just read one or two verses and I'll read them out loud so they actually sink in when I'm very distracted. I mean, I have a very busy, loud household. Yeah. And sometimes just reading a verse or two will be more impactful than what all that, that I read too. So it doesn't take much, just something sometimes. Right. Yeah. All right. This one, I know you'll you'll be able to come up with something. <laughs> okay, this one's from Amanda. She said, I love your videos, how encouraging they are. I'm a mother of two boys, ages 12 and 16. My question is, how do I get my boys into reading? My husband and I are chain readers, one book after another, and I cannot get my boys interested. What books would you recommend for their ages? You think I have the answer for that? Well, you had a boy that wasn't interested in reading for a while, and now he loves books and he reads really hard books. What did you do? He didn't like it the whole time he was under my roof. And then as an adult, he's a reader. Like yeah. he reads deep stuff. I know, but I think he just decided to, he needed to read. I don't know what made it happen. Well, maybe that will give you hope. 
I think the hunger for knowledge has, yeah. and his friends around him and mm -hmm. stuff. But I know what she's done is their whole homeschooling situation is with reading. And I think that's why I like to read. But I don't know. My husband, she was homeschooled. My husband loves to read and he wasn't. So yeah. I, some kids love it, some don't. But I think just just setting aside a time to read to them mm -hmm. and have them read some of it in a book that they would be interested in. It. And there are tons of books out there that they can like. Finding a, subject, finding a subject they like obviously is huge. So you got to figure out what they like. Yes. And if Luke would read a book and I just go, did you like that book? And he goes, no. I said, well, tell me about the book. Yeah. And then I found out he didn't read it. Oh, <laughs> I've had that conversation before. But, um, but no, once they read it a lot of times and talk about it, then they... We're know. all basically living the same life, guys. We do, just over and over and over again. <laughs> Though, I would say when they're younger, a little younger, um, maybe like 8, 9, 10, when I've had kids that didn't like to read, I got picture books from the library. And that has helped me with two kids that did not like to read at that age. And you would think picture books are for babies. No, they are not. They're good. It's I good like language. It's like a lot of them have big vocabulary and it got a couple of my kids to love reading and I just kept having them sitting around. I would also say that I have, when my older kids were younger, they got to go to, they had to go to bed at seven. But like when Judah, my oldest was eight or nine, 10, like you can go to, you still have to go to bed at seven, maybe not at 10. But um, you can read. You can read. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, my as soon mom as they did. were readers, we did that. Like yeah. you can read actually as late as you want, and that made them love reading. My older ones. Yeah. And then give them a little book light. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. Now I will say um, we do more electronics in the evening than we used to, but we still will say, okay, tonight is book night, and so you're welcome to go to bed or you're welcome to read. So even though we don't do it every night now. Um, we do shut it all down. So I think when they have nothing but books, their brain yeah. can slow down enough to enjoy the book more. Yeah. And so that's a big thing. I don't know what the situation would look for in your house, but if they're not having a chance for nothing but books, then they're, it, we're used to like this fast action from electronics and all these things all the time. And our kids are too. And that can be a bigger draw than yeah. reading. I know it is for me sometimes. I'd rather scroll Instagram than read a book, but then I get way more out of the book than I ever did out of that half hour on Instagram, you know? So yep. it's the same thing if you have no, no other choice, you realize, oh, wow, what a treasure this is, so. Hi, Sarah, my name is Beth, and my YouTube channel is A Dash of Gratitude. I started back in October on, you know, making videos and, my question for you is a little bit more on the content creator YouTube tech side. I want to know what camera or cameras do you use? What mic do you use? I loved how you talked about your mic and using it near the pond. I do have a mic too. It's currently on the charger, so I'm not using it right now, but I could definitely tell the difference in the sound quality. And I'm just curious, do you like that mic or which one do you use if not that one? Also, what other YouTube tech items do you love? What are your favorite go-tos that help you make the best videos? I also just wanted to tell you, thank you so much for opening up your platform to take questions. That's so cool. Every time you put out a video, I'm watching it, like the day it uploads. So I just wanted to thank you again for all that you put out into the world. You're helping so many people and inspiring families everywhere. Tell the family I said hi from South Carolina. Thank you so much, Sarah. The sweet video. That was a sweet video. Yeah. Thank you, Beth, for that. That was so nice. I, every Beth I know is a sweet lady. I know, I, listen. <laughs> I almost named Peace Beth. I but know. You, Seth and I, Beth together. It just came. Oh, that's true. Seth and Beth. <laughs> right next to each other, too. Maybe there's like 10 kids in between. I love the name Beth. I do, too. It's from Little Women. I know. That's Isn't she the one that died? She is. <laughs> but she was so sweet. She was. Yeah. Thank you for that. Um, thank you for that, for Beth. Anyway, uh, I use the Canon G7X. I'm on my, like, fifth or sixth one. I love her camera. We have a different one for our, because I'm a YouTuber also. Oh, yeah. But mm -hmm. we have a different one, and I like hers. I love this one. It's the most popular one for vloggers. The only thing I don't like about it is the where it doesn't always want to focus right away. That's true. I probably drive my editor crazy, because I don't always look at myself. There's a flip-up screen that... so I can look, and then I don't always look to make sure it's in focus. I try to, but, um, or so even could, when I'm filming, you I just start could, talking. And... You could fix that. I could wait a second till it's focused. <laughs> I know you guys see it too. 
Uh, but she probably has to cut a lot. <laughs> oh man. Anyway, I do love, it's not the best focus, but it does focus. You just got to give it a second, but it is just so handy and convenient. And I'm, I'm on the, they last me because I vlog a lot. They last me about five years and my kids, I let them vlog too. So eventually they do break, um, but they're not the most expensive one out there. So it's okay for me. I, I just assume that I'm buying one every year. And then the last time we did, we bought two because I think Solo and I were apart for quite a while and I wanted him to vlog. And it's just so much easier than using your phone or anything. So we have two now, which is really convenient. That Then if one breaks, we have a backup too. <laughs> I've been using my phone sometimes. Yeah, a lot of people do and they have a lot of success. I do like the picture on my phone really uh, well. I do, I just don't like the microphone. The volume, yeah. yes. And the volume is too Maybe low. if we had newer phones. No, I have a brand new one. Oh, okay. It doesn't work. No, I, actually, I have to raise the volume when I edit. Oh. So, but yeah. um, I do like using the phone. Mm -hmm. It's just hard to figure out how to hold it. And, yes. you know, it is a little harder. If I had a stick, that's what yes. I keep telling Jerry. Get me one of those yes. sticks. I, I have my camera on a little tripod now that kind of yeah. stretches and you can hold it. I almost never use it. Almost never. No, but it is easier if you get used mm -hmm. to it. I know some family vloggers we've been around, hung around with that they use it constantly. And I just mm -hmm. don't. Even Luke does more. But yeah. um, And then I have a large tripod that I just use when Solo and I are sitting down together to vlog, really. And then I have a couple lights. I don't pull that stuff out very no. often. I just use my camera. And then I don't love my mic when I'm listening back to my videos, but it is better than my chaotic house sometimes when I'm filming by the pond. It cuts out the wind for sure. I will link what I use. I'll link my camera, my little tripod at least. Well, you got a new microphone. When you start and my using microphone. the microphone, the Do you wind, think that sounds good? It helps with the wind. It does. When you're it outside. does. But doesn't it sound kind of like weird? No. Maybe it's I don't think me. so. I will link what I What sounds I weird is when I edit and I have to cut out background noise. Then uh, that at my house weird. of the yeah. videos. Right. Oh, you can cut back. And some noise. of the noise that I want to cut out doesn't cut out. <laughs> I didn't know you could cut stuff out. What? You didn't know you can do cut out the background. Oh. No. <laughs> I need to teach her how to edit. What? I could have been filming at my house all this time. No, but it doesn't take it all out. Oh, okay. And then it pieces real loud, like uh, like in her mad She just loud. found her voice and she started screaming. Yeah. I'm like, we don't do that here. Yeah, Stop that, that. That doesn't cut out. And the other day, Noelle whistled. That didn't oh. cut out. <laughs> She's on a whistling kick too. Whenever I hear whistling, that just doesn't sound like it. No just well. did not cut out. I, was trying to get, I, I didn't hear it as it was happening until I started to edit the video, and then all of a sudden that high, shrill little. Oh yeah. And she kept going and going, and finally, and I, I don't know if I left this in, but you could see Papa going. Yeah. Stop it. Here, here he's looking at her going. And she got the idea. She quit. That's behind the scenes yes. at the Papa's Kitchen. She's really good at not holding a grudge, too. She probably just started whistling when he was done. Yeah, she probably did. Uh, thanks for being on my video today, helping answer questions. I appreciate all your experience. I'm going to read that book that you talked about. You need to read yeah. mine. I've read that book. Oh. It's a good book. Hey guys, I have some free for you too. I keep forgetting to tell you. Conversation starters for your dinner table. Oh. We always did family dinner when yeah. I was growing up and we try as much as we can to do dinner, family dinner with our kids, but I have a free resource for you. You can just print it out, keep it somewhere near the dinner table and it gives you some great ideas to use. Uh, when you're having family dinner. People don't have family dinners very much anymore. No, but I just did a whole Bible study on conversation and how to have conversations. Oh. And in the back of the book is a whole list of no conversation kidding. starters. See, we all need help sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> I'll leave that link in the description box below. You can click on it and just get it free sent to your email. And also one other note is that my home management course, I put it on sale. I've never done that before, but I put it on sale for the month of January. So still today and tomorrow, you can get that for $50 off, which is like one third off. And never done that before. Not sure if I'll ever do it again. So I'll put that link down in the description plus a code for you to get that discount. Thank you guys for watching today. Bye. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.